Hello, and welcome to The Chop Shop. My name is Dion Tucker. Today, we're going to discuss articulation and tonguing. Well, isn't that the same thing? Not exactly. But let's talk about the difference between the two. If you haven't done so yet, go ahead and click the subscribe button and push the notification bell so you can get a heads up on whenever I put out a new video. Is there a difference between articulating and tonguing? These words are so closely tied together in music that we forget the subtle difference in the two. When you think about tonguing, for me, it triggers that we're about to do something with our tongue and the tongue is the primary muscle that's gonna be involved. So that changes my focus of attention to the tongue. When I think about articulation, I think about it more in the sense of how is the tongue embellishing the airstream? The embellishment of the airstream is actually what creates the sound of the note. For me, I prefer to think about articulating as opposed to tonguing because it leaves my focus on the sound of the note and not the action of the tongue. There are many different syllables you can use in articulation. For a single note, you can use ta, da, tu, ti. All of these different syllables work to create a specific sound out of one note. If you have multiple notes, you would use techniques like double tonguing or triple tonguing. Some of the common syllables with those are taka taka ta or tuku tuku tu, daga daga da, dugu dugu du, or for triple tonguing, tuku tu or daga da, taka ta or dugu du. Those are all very common syllables in multiple tonguing. If you think about those syllables in the sense of articulation and how does the tongue placement embellish the airstream when you use them, it could help your tonguing be a lot more fluid. I'm gonna play a couple of these articulations on the instrument to explore what role does the tongue play in the sound of the note. So usually I like to get things going by just blowing some air into the lead pipe just to make that connection between the air and the embellishment of the airstream. Now I plug the mouthpiece in and just go ahead and start exploring what it feels like for the tongue to touch that airstream. After I play a couple notes, I'll do the same thing. I'll go back to the mouthpiece just put some air through the lead pipe and start trying to feel the connection of the tongue on the airstream. And I would say take your time with this. And as you start to feel where that tongue is making contact, explore around the horn a little bit. Just let your airstream take you. Now the same concept as we move on to multiple tonguing. I want to let that airstream become familiar with what it feels like to make contact. Now as I plug the mouthpiece in, I don't want to lose my relationship with the articulation. So really I'm observing what does it feel like to articulate on this airstream. Had to bring my triple tongue out of hibernation for these. But if I can say the syllable, I should be able to articulate the notes. So as we move on to double tonguing, saying da, da, ga, da, ga, da, da, I like to use a legato double tongue. And I'm 
still observing how does the airstream react to the tongue and what sound is created when I use these syllables. Now it's good to practice in the upper register because it's really a telltale sign of whether your tongue is in the way or not. If your tongue is in the way of the note, it won't speak. These are two things you don't commonly find, double tonguing in the extreme upper register, but it's very informative to how the tongue is embellishing the airstream. So what's easier for you, to think about articulating or to think about tonguing? For me, thinking about articulating made things a whole lot easier. It took my mind off the action of what is the tongue doing and it allowed me to focus more on the sound that was coming out of the instrument. How is the tongue embellishing that sound? Let me know in the comments whether you think about articulation or whether you think about tonguing. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'll see you next time at the Chop Shop.